the Red Revolution. Also, it rewards Labour's union paymasters. It scraps a string of anti-strike laws. Oh, great, people can go on strike more. And removing unnecessary restrictions on trade union activity. Also, new equality laws also rolled into all of this. Marilyn Devonish, remote working consultant, joins me now. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. What do you make of all of this? Because in theory, it all sounds good until you look at the detail of this. And I know many small businesses are panicking. We've had messages from people saying they're now not going to employ the people they were going to employ in this country and they're going to get them from offshore. Well, one of the things about this, number one, it's not necessarily entirely new because this has been coming for a while. Um, I've been on Talk TV, spoke about this a few months ago in terms of bringing this into law, giving people the right to work from home. Where There is a caveat to this, of course, where it is reasonable. It doesn't mean that every... Because if you're going to be, let's say, applying to be a bus driver, a train driver, <laughs> you've just been talking about transport, there's no point saying, I want to work from home. You would not apply for that particular Tricky. role. So yes. where it's reasonable, it doesn't mean that everyone in every job is going to have the right to work from home because it just will not be feasible in some roles yeah now also what about uh, there's there's quite a lot in here and this immediate access to sickness and parental leave from day one protection from unfair dismissal so the message i had earlier on was saying well we employ loads and loads of people and actually we need the right to weed out the really bad ones and, and throw them out that goes and that shouldn't, in terms of the probation, that will still remain, as far as I can tell from reading through the documentation, listening to the speech, that will still remain. So you'll be on your probation period. So I don't think there's anything that is too wild here, because if you think about the flip side of some of these things, it could be quite draconian mm. if you're saying that you want to exploit people. And I think that's one of the things this is reaching for in terms of bringing in fairer treatment of workers rather than suddenly saying you're not going to employ anyone. Because I would then question, well, how are you treating your staff mm. if you don't want to do some of the things that would some would consider to be quite basic? And if we talk about it in those terms, human right and there are some good pieces in this as well like the right to switch off and that is something i've been talking about for the last 21 years that i've been a remote um working implementation consultant because those things are really important they, they are but they're not practical are they because in today's workplace let's take for example what i do i don't switch off it's impossible to switch off because you're bombarded by messages 24 7. I, I wake up and have a string of messages that i have to respond to that's 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 the practicality of what happens in the workplace now isn't it and Dave, we've got such an emphasis on mental health. I've been a coach and therapist since the year 2000. Your mental health is key. Now, the fact that you might choose not to switch off, that will be your prerogative. And if that works for you and your mental health, great. However, now that we are saying you have the right to switch off, it gives those people who do not want to be bombarded 24 hour a day the right to do so. And one of the things I... So, no, sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say, well, how do, you, how do you possibly get ahead? This is dog eat dog world. I mean, it's all very well saying I'm going to sit at home and, you know, have a cafe latte. But actually, if you want to get on in business, you have to work hard. You have to put the hours in and you have to turn up when the boss wants you, don't you? One of the things that is really strange about remote working, when I first started doing this in 2003, one of the first things I would say to people is you've got to manage your time well, look at the productivity and output, look at your KPIs, because I suspected, and it's absolutely true, majority of people will work extra hard from home because they want to prove that they're working, they're not just sitting around all day watching cat videos and all the rest of it so actually people were overworking you are always going to have people who as we used to say back in the day will swing the lead and take advantage yeah. that is human nature and now this comes down to your management practices and what is your workforce supposed to be doing and are they delivering those outputs and if they are not this doesn't say that you can have a team full of, of what people not working it's not going to take away your rights for disciplinary etc now it comes down to your management what are people actually doing well what about zero hours contracts although it's worded and it says exploitative zero hours contracts there are many people in this country who like zero hours contracts aren't there now that is an area i'd say that's more of a kind of a, a legal one to really look at and tackle and 
with regards to that the word i think you said the key word there exploitative where things are exploitative mm. again it comes down to looking at the way businesses are working and are people being treated well are they being treated fairly and are they being exploited and if they are i don't think anyone listening would want to happily know that workers are being exploited and i know they've already started to i think the term they use was watered down a few of these things so this is going to be playing out i would say over the ne next few weeks and months and we'll see where we end up with regards to that because we know there's been pushback i mean when you talk to people like luke johnson who i know actually a serial entrepreneur he was the chairman of pizza express he says these rules will stifle economic growth more regulation makes britain a less attractive place for investment also smaller businesses are saying right we're not going to employ people directly we're actually going to go through other organizations like professional employer organizations that means that they can take on all the responsibilities of hr for example so we don't have to because we're really worried about what's going to happen and I'm going to say, let's see how it plays out, because when something supposedly new, as I said, this isn't really that new because it, the previous government had been talking about many of these things already. But when something new, there's always a, a kind of a, a knee jerk reaction. There is going to be that panic mode. And then when it comes into practice and we see the small print, the king only made that well less than 24 hours ago. I, just, I was reading through the um, the reason that the the kind of the deliver what they call it in delivering the new deal for working people. That's oh that's that's no more than 30 pages. I yeah. think it was 22 pages. So we haven't got the detail. And I'm going to say the devil will be in the detail. And I'm, I don't think it's going to be as dramatic as people are currently making out.